Hello, my name's Gareth Tunley, and I am the writer, director, and producer of The Ghoul. Who are you? Hello, Gareth. Uh, I'm uh, Tom Meaton, and I uh, helped produce the film with these guys, and I was also the lead. Hello, I'm Jack Keeley Goodman, and I produce The Ghoul with Gareth and Tom. Why did we want to make this film as our debut? I didn't film? want to make it. You didn't want to make uh, it. None of us me. wanted to make it. You no, we uh, it. we wanted to make a film that was uh, about mental health, I guess, in some ways. And um, we realised that people aren't necessarily queuing up at multiplexes to see films about depression. So we thought, why not make it as a thriller? That was the idea, basically. That was the it? idea. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of Gareth's. Um, Gareth wrote the uh, uh, wrote the script and uh, got uh, Jack and I involved. Roped in. Yeah, forced us to get involved. Um, but those sort of seeds, I think the idea was to sort of try and tackle mental health, but make it exciting, really, and um, sort of that was the approach, which I think... Uh, make a thriller about depression. Yeah. That's the pitch. Yeah, it's quite a good pitch. I think, yeah. hope we achieved that, did we? Yeah, definitely. And I think we also made it because um, because we could, if that makes sense. We no took the, took the script, uh, we found a way to make that script work for a film that we could make with our kind of limitations. Yeah, and that's that right. That was part of the being able to make this film. <coughs> that's right, the, the script was very much came out of the budget rather than the other way around. It wasn't like a normal script where you get the script and then somebody breaks down the budget and tells you how much it's going to cost. Our budget was very low, very, very low. Um, a micro budget and so the budget kind of told us what was going to be in the script very much so especially me and Jack went through it don't know what Tom was doing at that time he's just doing my hair just doing his hair yeah. um, would go through the script and kind of pull out anything that uh, couldn't be done on the budget which turns out was most of the script um, but then we kind of weirdly found ways to do parts of the film that we didn't think at first were going to be possible like uh, like the car, the car crash and yeah. uh, the car sequence, which was done in um, in a garage in Twickenham with uh, pound shop torches behind the car uh, as um, uh, 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 car lamps, car headlamps. I had to do acting, driving. You had to like do that driving, acting. In a garage like that. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds, it was, you, yeah, that was good. <laughs> It sounds like we're making this up, but we're not, I assure you. <laughs> That's how tiny our budget was. But I think in terms of the script and, and where that... Um, um, in terms of the practicalities of trying to do it, the great thing about the script that Gareth wrote was that... And it partly um, ingrained into the nature of the film that it's the film is about sort of loops as well and cycles. So cunningly, we could reuse a lot of our locations and locations e twice. exactly yeah and, and and actual characters as well they they get introduced and then they re reoccur in the film as a di totally different character it's a very environmentally friendly <laughs> film in that way <laughs> it's just constantly recycling <laughs> things throughout the film it does it recycles and that's sort of a, a kind of key i think to trying to do a super low budget uh, film is to keep it within your means and if you can reuse stuff and that's that's even better as well and we would reuse locations so a lot of the story locations are the same real world location, but just upstairs or along a corridor. So we filmed um, quite a lot of the film in uh, Jack's family home. I say family home, makes you sound like some sort of uh, landed gentry, um, but just your house, yeah. basically. My, my parents' house while they were away. Parents they, were away, had no idea what was going on. Yeah. We had a three-month window while they were away because they were doing a big trip and we turned that house. Were they angry when they came back? No, they, did, they didn't know. They we didn't did a know. good enough job of tidying up, just on the, like, getting it sorted. I think we overdid tidying up in some ways. <laughs> the house was in a better state when we left it than when yeah, we came possibly. in. Possibly, yeah. So the kitchen of one character would be in that house and then the study of another character would be in the same house. So even though in the story location it was... In the story, the locations are all over the place. They would all be together. And the same with, like, your flat. My flat got used as well. We didn't use my flat. My flat was not suitable for <laughs> use in a film. But we did <laughs> We did get a shot from outside my kitchen window. Looking, oh, yeah, we looking did. Looking down at you. Yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. 
So it was very much... So my, yeah, my flat got used for the sort of... We, we called it the party scene. It's not really a party. It's the lamest party in history. But um, uh, the, a gathering sort of party thing. And then we used bedroom. And then we used some of the... Uh, we used the, f the fact that I was in flats to do um, landscape, cityscapes, shot the off the top, of rooftop. rooftop. And, and so rooftop it was just... Things. I think that's essential if you're trying to do something super low budget is to maximise any location you have to its fullest potential and doing stuff off the cuff and going oh let's grab that that, this, that might be useful i think that's There's a lot of that people yeah. people often ask how we um, made london look so such a nightmarish hellscape and the answer is that's just where i live <laughs> that's just about that's just a couple of streets away from where i where i live that's just that's just hackney no hackney's lovely Hackney's it's very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. Uh, the funding of the film was, uh, I had some of the, we don't talk about the exact budget. No, uh, we're legally not we're, allowed to um, answer me. We're, we just choose not to. But, because we like an air of mystery. <laughs> but um, we, uh, I had some money that I'd raised through doing various acting jobs. Um, and then we got a, uh, a bursary, or I got a bursary, from uh, an organisation called the John Brayborn Award, which is uh, something people should know about, which is run by the Cinema Television Benevolent Fund, which is something that people can apply for, I think, twice a year now, um, in January and sometime in July or something like that. Um, and so we got actually half the budget from that, but we're talking about a low budget for a film very about as low as about micro, as low as they go micronesian mm. micronesian yes. in, in scale but um also it was um uh sort of gareth kind of drove that side of it. It, it for that award uh, not many people use it to make a film or to contribute to actually make a film they use it for all sorts of things like sort of child care and training to be a stuntman and courses and things like that i have no children you got no, got no children, <laughs> children so i decided to make a film you got no, no children or family well, we were very much just kind of the, the <coughs> impetus behind it was just we wanted to make uh, a film and I'd been writing scripts for years and sending them out into the industry and it became uh, very clear that no one was going to give me any money ever <laughs> to make a film ever. So uh, we thought we'd, we'd better just make one somehow. And I'd been in a film um, of uh, Ben Wheatley's first film um, albeit for only a couple of minutes, but I did a lot of hanging around um, watching how it was done. Uh, and that was that film was called Down Terrace, and that was a very, very, very small budget film. And so that kind of, that started as our model, and then as we, very quickly, we just had to invent our own way of doing things. Yeah, one, one thing I love about the film is we didn't really get greenlit. We greenlit ourselves. Green. We, oh. we had our opportunity in our window and our scripts and, and everything and we just said right we've, we've got to make this now we've got this this window and that's we we greenlit ourselves we were greenlit by sheer desperation we yeah. shot it's a very it. long um, it's a very long process the whole yeah. because because we were dealing with having hardly any money all the, all the normal processes took perhaps about 10 times as long i would say so a lot of favors a lot of sort of people working especially in the post uh period of the film there's a lot of people working at weekends and doing us favors really to help get it out there so it took a lot longer but what are you going to say Sorry yeah we that. we shot it in March 2014 wow. yeah so that shows how long it yeah has taken yeah um, and we I think we we called it pre-production but that was our own self you know self-made pre-production uh, meetings that we were doing and that started in January 2014. That's kind of how I, where I have it as we're officially making this film now yeah. was January, maybe the 2nd of January yeah. 2014, and then yeah. shooting in March, and then all, like Tom said, the long process through post and um, a long time. fitting the edit, everything in the edit was uh, The edit was about a year because it was just done in our spare time on laptops and so on. And then the late post-production, the grade and the mix had all kinds of false starts um, and all kinds of things like the conform and all the kind of technical things you have to do to get it to make a DCP, which is the thing they show in cinemas. Um, all of that took, you know, at least another year as well, all told. Uh, on top of that, so that's why it it's very hard to do all that technical stuff, which 
nearly sent Gareth insane because he sort of did it himself on his did, laptop. He did send me insane. <laughs> he did send you insane. But that's sort of something you just sort of take for granted, I think, if you're doing a bigger, bigger budget film. But for us, we, Gareth had to make the DCP on his laptop, um, you know, at home in his kitchen, which is sort of unheard of in lots of, lots of ways. So we would, that's the scale we were dealing with. At um, least at first. And then once, yeah, we've got it, once yes, we got it to a certain stage, um, we were really lucky. Uh, our exec, Deraj Mahe, uh, came on board and he took the film, which was finished. It was a completely finished film, but he took the film and still transformed it in the sense that he, um, he got it out into the world, which sounds like a simple thing, but it was a hu that was another at least 18 months, really, of of his time um, getting the film screened to the industry and just slowly kind of getting people on board and positioning the film and getting people to see the film in a certain light, basically. Yeah, I mean, in, on that front, we started off um, just by organising a few screenings for our friends and sort of tried to get it, you know, friends that were a bit more in the industry. And so we started off like that. And from those sort of seeds, we eventually got a few more industry people coming and just sort of got that encouragement. So it, again, it started off from a very small uh, lo-fi way of getting it out there. And it was just ourselves as well, really, as no, no one was clamoring for this film that, no, that nobody had heard of. Uh, there wasn't really any, anything like that going on. And then the, the sort of breakthrough was um, getting it into the London Film Festival. And that was about kind of seven or eight months after it was finally, finally, finally finished that that happened. And that was a major kind of uh, uh, breakthrough. And then um, getting nominated for a British Independent Film Award was another big breakthrough for us. And then eventually, after all of that, we uh, got picked up by our distributor, Arrow, who uh, eventually, months later again, uh, did a fantastic job of getting a cinema release and. and other platforms as well. What, what advice would you give people in our situation? Well, I, I would be very encouraging. I would say just go for it and see. I mean, sort of be realistic about what you're, what you're trying to shoot. You know, don't be too ambitious in the uh, terms of... The scale. The mm. scale, yes. I mean, you can still be cinematic, but you can be cinematic in a kitchen. Um, so that's sort of not a bad kind of ethos to try to think about really. You can be cinematic in terms of the ideas that are in the film. Exactly. You don't yeah. necessarily need crowd scenes. Well I think that's what the goal does well is that, it, that it, from Gareth's sort of script and direction it, it, it's expansive but on a, on a sort of suburban level so it's a thriller but it's all set, set in quite sort of claustrophobic environment but expansively and in terms of the ideas within the film it's, it, it's sort of enormous and very cinematic and I suppose that's a thing to try and concentrate on if you haven't got much money, is to try and keep that scope as wide as possible and, and, and play with ideas and be original as well. That would be my other um, tip that I'd um, like to see. I don't think there's any point. If you're doing a low-budget film, you might as well go for it. I don't think. try and make a mainstream film. Yeah, well, I think um, also, and I think we'll see what happens, but I think this, that if you're doing your first film for hardly any money, it might be the only time you get to do exactly what you want. Yeah. So d why not really go for it and, and really do whatever it is you want. And I'd also add passion. that if we can do it, literally anybody <laughs> can do it. Look at us. Well, we, we, all, us. we all learn on the job in, in all levels, um, in every yeah. aspect we learn on the job and learn by doing it. Um, perhaps, well, time will tell if we've learnt the lessons well. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get another go. <laughs>